Hello and Assalamu alaikum viewers. TV Apex always brings you uh, notable Pakistanis who've done uh, tremendous work in society, whether in Pakistan or outside Pakistan, or mainly in UK, you can say. We have a similar sort of a person here in our studio, in TV Apex studio in London, who's, who's, who's a bright young star, I would say, and uh, will have to go miles and miles still for the time to come, inshallah. And uh, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's hard to introduce her, it's actually her, uh, but it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of hard as well because she's, she's, she's one young person, I would say, who's done so much uh, work and achieved so much already. And inshallah, for time to come, she will do more. Uh, and I think we'll just know it all from her herself. And I'll just uh, take you to her directly. We have Miss Rabia Bhatti with us in studio. Assalamu alaikum, Rabia. Wa alaikum How are you doing, Rabia? You okay? Very well, thank you. Rabia, uh, should we speak to you in English? Either. Both. Either. Okay, we'll, we'll, we've got to check you out as well then uh, today. Guess how you perform. Rabia, thank you for coming to uh, TV Apex um, uh, Studios for, for this interview and giving us all time. Rabia, uh, Rabia Bhatti, uh, if you allow me to say uh, myself before me asking you a question of uh, that similar sort, you've been you're the first youngest councillor of Buckinghamshire and uh, you're the first Muslim and first female uh, councillor ever in uh, Britain as well. Ek uh, to youngest councillor hona, phir ek female youngest councillor hona and then uh, youngest Muslim councillor hona or then coming from Pakistan being the youngest councillor again how does it feel? How did it happen? And how does it feel, first of all? It feels amazing. I feel very blessed. Um, it has been an interesting journey, one that I look forward to carrying on with. Um, it's beautiful, absolutely. Doing what you love on a daily basis, you can't ask for anything better than that, to be a part of something that you're extremely passionate about and enjoy and having to live that dream day in and day out it's a wonderful feeling. Uh, Rabia tell us what's the role of a counsellor why is it imp important being a counsellor? I think it's important to just be a part of something that you really believe in where you feel that you can make a difference where your voice is heard it's important to be part of a platform that you feel that you can add to um, and for that reason be it in politics or in any other field, just to be a part of that system um, for anybody, especially a young person, I think is absolutely critical. Cool. So uh, uh, that's that's amazing. And what is again uh, coming to the same thing? What does a councillor do uh, for that area? And 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 maybe we should ask, uh, what did you do, and then and how was it like? It's um, you have to be a very good people's person. You know, you have to really be able to want to help and you have to love what you do. Um, being a counsellor is about listening to people, is about trying to get things done, is about fighting for what you believe in. Um, and I feel that if I can do that for the residents of Chesham, I would, I would consider it a, a, a job well done. Right. And how was the experience being a counsellor? Great. Great. Absolutely yeah. great. Um, you grow a lot as a person. You, you experience things you didn't think you'd have to and you learn to fight and you and learn to stand up for what you actually really believe in because it's not only for yourself, it's for the people that you represent and keeping their views and their wants and needs in mind and being able to fight for them and then give them what they want is an exceptional feeling. In a typical cliche, I would say you have to be afraid of that you know, that you have to interact with you have to interact every day in your, in your, within your role, within your job uh, ke, or log apne apne requests or queries ke saath aayenge aur apni findings ke saath aapke paas approach karenge and there will be all sorts of people to aapko thoda sa kaisa lagta tha aapko honestly like that that's the best part of the job to be honest i prefer the challenging every day yeah absolutely it's a lot more fun than sitting in front of some paperwork and having to read through it not just the paperwork you have to meet people like in sort of personally as well and then then have to stop them have to sort of 
provoke them as well sometimes to say something if they're not saying it's and to stop them well, if yes, saying a lot. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's all it's all part it's part and parcel of the job, and I absolutely love it. I love being able to hear other people's points of views. It really enables you to grow as a person, to understand things from different perspectives, and it just enhances your own learning and your own thinking structures in the way that you work. Sure, sure there will be people um, who who you think, okay, I understand where you're coming from, but I don't like it. But I think it increases your patience. Right. Rabia, I wanted to know you because it's time I'm interviewing now and then I've been um, uh, seeing you as well um, in different occasions, different community events. And uh, you, you, Marshall, are very active and you, you make a point to be there and then your voice is heard as well. Uh, very simple question. What was your shock that you came to this field, that you became a counselor, which is a part of uh, politics at the stage or aage ja ke agar aap continue karenge to hame pata ke phir phir mainstream mein aap aa jayengi ki politics ka hissa aapko kya it's a very basic question i think it's it's a it's one of maybe one of the classics as well for the days to come as well ki aapko kya is mein kyu aana tha aapne kya shock tha aapko politics is never on the agenda for me ever. right from a very young age i've always just wanted to work in the humanitarian aid sector um grew up thinking I'm going to be out working in uh, in the field, out doing some work maybe in Africa, um, going to uh, third world countries. Again, being from Pakistan and being exposed to the level of poverty, um, it really touched my heart. I mean, I, I just knew from my very first visit, this is what I want to do. It, it was it was a natural calling. So I grew up thinking, this is what I'm going to do. Had my plan. And uh, like the best of plans, it went completely out of the window. <laughs> um, with politics, it, was, um, it wasn't something I'd worked towards. It's something uh, I was given the opportunity to do. And I'm a firm believer that if you have the chance, you should take it. And whether it works out for the better or for worse, at least you would have taken it and you would have learned from it. And I think that's the most important thing to understand that things don't go in a good way or a bad way. There are experiences that make you a better, stronger, more resilient person and they add to, your, uh, to yourself. Right. Abhi, you said you've given this responsibility uh, in, in, in your last few lines. So who gave you this responsibility? How did it come to you? Was, it, was, it, was there a thing from parents and then or, or did your area counsellor or previous ex counsellor sort of come to you by, by seeing your talent and all that? I think it was my father. Your father? Yes, my father. I mean, he's been in politics for a long time. Right. Um, he knew it wasn't something um, that I wanted to do. But when I started thinking about it on a more serious level, um, he just said to me, Robbie, give it a shot. Right. If it's something that you're passionate about and you believe that you can make a difference and if you're doing it for the right reasons, right. give it a shot. And if it happens, it will happen. And if not, you would have learned from that experience. Right. Rabia, you've been to uh, Jinnah Forum's event in um, 2011. Uh, let's show our viewers some clips uh, of what Rabia said last time when she came to Jinnah Forum's day on, uh, with regards to Pakistan Day celebration. So stay with us. Thank you all for being here today on your day of rest to remember an extraordinary man with an extraordinary vision. Pakistan over the years has been, been touched by tragedy, exhilarated by challenge and strengthened by achievement. It is time for us to realize that we the people are the solution. We must invest more in our people, in their future, in their jobs. All of us, in whatever way, must assume personal responsibility, not only for ourselves, but for our neighbours and our nations. We are now in a time where communication and commerce are global. Investment is mobile, technology is instant, and ambition for a better life is universal. Profound and powerful forces are shaking and remaking our world. And the pioneers of this change are young people. People like we have just seen on this stage today. They are our future. So how do we empower our youth? 
We give them a vision. We give them a vision of a multicultural, diverse, democratic, equal future. We give them the vision that Qaid the Azam wanted Pakistan to be. We speak a language of power, of justice, of truth. In the words of Mr. Jinnah himself, our success and our achievements depend upon our unity, our faith, and our discipline. I leave you today with these words. This year alone, we have seen the Arab Spring. We have seen the youth in the Middle East make a statement. Those youth say no to oppression and they say yes to freedom. Those, those youth say no to corruption and bad policy and they say yes to transparency. I urge you all today to take away from here a personal responsibility to empower our Pakistani youth our Pakistani youth to go to Pakistan and to help build a better future for us, for our children, for our generations to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Viewers, you welcome to the second part in conversation with Rabia Bhatti, the youngest councillor of her Buckinghamshire, Chesham, and first female youngest Muslim uh, counselor and Pakistani as well at the same time. Rabia, uh, uh, there has been a tremendous influence uh, on your uh, uh, on your work, I'd say, or your achievements uh, from your father's side. Please tell us a little about your how 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 he helped you out in this, basically. Gosh, um, looking at my father growing up, being around him, it really gave me a lot of confidence. I went to many events with him. Um, and I was speaking, I think I gave one of my first public addresses at the age of 13, I believe. Um, so it really gave me a lot of confidence, really built up my self-esteem. He empowered me to believe in myself, to stand up for what I believe in, um, and not to go along with any scriptured format, uh, which I believe has enabled me to become who I am today, having that exposure to political life, having that exposure towards the media, towards people interaction. Um, has made me the person I am today, amongst many other things, but indeed it has played a very pivotal role in my life. Yeah. Okay, very interestingly, talking about scripted things, I'd say how, how because it comes with the, with the package, mm, I'd say, mm. okay, that you have to prepare so many speeches, and then, and then even, even the greatest of leaders do have to go through certain points before their speeches, and, and they do carry, and, uh, it depends on wh wh what occasion they're, they're sort of they're go going to uh, be addressing. Um, uh, either to the nation or the, to the parliament or giving interviews like that. Uh, how does it feel uh, 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 when, when you're about to go to, a, go to an event? Do you, do you, do you because you've, uh, we've seen you, you've, you, you started off with, 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 with sort of written thing, written format of speech, or uh, you can like, uh, mm. be, can be spot on and then, but uh, how do you prepare for it if I sum it up very quickly? How does it feel? It always, you work it, out? <laughs> it always is always yeah. nerve-wracking, nerve you know, if, even if you've done it a million times over. It is indeed. Um, but no, I feel that I've really grown as a person in, in doing that. I don't like walking out with the script. I, I don't like that. I feel that it's, it's not very genuine. Um, well, it can be. I mean, sometimes you have straightforward whatever you have to say, so it's starting from A to Z and you read it. And then if you want to add naturally, I mean, there are different styles. But then, but then yeah, you, you, as you, you write grow, as well. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, but as mm. you grow, I would prefer, I prefer going up without having, you know, a, a written speech uh, in front of me and, and to really be able to talk from the heart and to talk from what I believe and how I feel. Um, I think that's more important. Of course, there will be occasions where it is required to have a written speech with you, and it's great help. It's, it's a tremendous help having, having notes with you. Uh, very comforting, actually, knowing yes. that you're not completely yeah. on the spot. Sometimes you jumble um, up which one to go, exactly. go first. That's what happens exactly. to me. Um, oh. So again, it, it should be a good, a good balance of both. Um, but I believe as you go along, you find one suits you better than the other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rabia, uh, Apart from being a youngest counsellor um, in your area, 
would you like to share with our viewers what are your other achievements what do you uh, do with regards to work in your daily life as well i believe you and i've seen you uh, you you you're the ambassador of some of the organizations in pakistan and in here as well mm -hmm. uh, and i've been on, on those events as well uh, would you like to share with our viewers here please uh, indeed, I am an ambassador for the 500-500 campaign for the Hashi Foundation, yep. which works to empower women. I'm also an ambassador for the British Pakistan Foundation. I am uh, a governor for Ellsbury College. I am an executive member of four different organizations, uh, and I speak for three, including uh, Prince, Royal, uh, Prince Charles' um, charity Chari mosaic. All right. Yeah, I just happened to um, uh, do 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 a charity for for Princess Trust as well, so it, was, it could be similar thing as well. Lovely, uh, Rabia. How do you spend your day to day life apart from all this political uh, work and all this these these uh, you know immense responsibilities mm -hmm. that you perform in your day to day routine? How how is Rabia Bhatti as a normal human being? Do you cook? Do you <laughs> and what do you cook well and all that? I'm learning. You're learning. I'm learning. Acha, ab kya karti hain? Chale hum bataye hain. Ab how how's your typical day like? On on a on a typical day where I'm not working, which isn't very, you know, which isn't which is very rare. often, <laughs> very rare. Um, I do like to just spend some time with my family at home. I'm a very um, indoorsy person. But I think when you spend most of your time outside interacting. Um, dealing with a lot of responsibility, being out on a public platform uh, pretty much every single day for hours on end. When you do have a moment to yourself, it's very nice to just retreat back at home with your family, um, you know, make silly faces with my nieces, take them out, just, just be in bed with a good book uh, and watch a good film. That's, that's uh, the Robbie's best day. Best day, right, right. Uh, uh, Rabia, what do you see that England and um, Pakistan in uh, politics? Mein kya hai? Aap, as a, you, being a politics, uh, uh, politics ki students, you are a student and you are growing up and you are Have you you have seen the Pakistan politics in Pakistan? You have seen the news, I'm sure. Absolutely. So, what do you think about the system? Although it's similar, the British uh, parliamentary mm. system is similar. Hai. Brief, what do you think about the system? They're both democratic systems, right. uh, which is fantastic. Which is fantastic as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I believe that Pakistan has a long way to go at, uh, you know, in regards to. Uh, its infrastructure and the way the country is governed, uh, but bearing in mind Pakistan, it, you know, it's not even a hundred years old at the moment. You think so? So it's got a long way to go before Inshallah. it becomes uh, an established, stable society, which is what I think we should all be working towards and striving for. Uh, Pakistan does have the potential; it has the people who are very hardworking, very willing. Um, and extremely talented. We yeah. have some very, very no talented doubts, yes. uh, Pakistani people in Pakistan, and therefore we should be and working. And outside Pakistan, like yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and we should all be working towards providing them with all the support and all the encouragement that they need to be able to build a Pakistan that they are proud of, a vision that the founders had visioned um, when they they brought the country into existence. That's what exactly you did with, uh, like, by affiliating with one of the organizations in Pakistan, mm. and mm. you helped them uh, launching their stuff here, which is amazing, I'd say. Rabia, uh, you've been to uh, Pakistan Future Leaders co Conference this year in Oxford University, Indeed. and um, uh, how did you feel like, how, uh, how did you think this kind of an event um, can help uh, discussing Pakistan's politics and future uh, being discussed with the uh, future leaders, as it says, guess uh, alaga I think it was brilliant. Yeah, How absolutely. Did you feel? Um, people need these kind of platforms, especially young people who are passionate about Pakistan and do want to help. Bring them together on a platform where they can interact with each other and discuss actual issues that are happening on the ground okay. that are part of the lives of people in Pakistan um, is absolutely critical yeah. in getting them to understand. Yeah the country's dynamics and the way it is performing and where there's need for improvement. Yeah. Um, as one of the panel experts, it was very interesting for me to see their vision for Pakistan and what they wanted to do and how they believe things needed to change. Um, I, I believe there was a lot of influence of the Arab Spring 
um, going, time, around yes, in, yeah. going around in, in the committee rooms. And it was very inspiring. It's very inspiring and very encouraging um, to see the determination of British Pakistanis and Pakistanis of Pakistani origin yeah. being in the same rooms together, mm. um, talking about being committed, about bringing change, mm. about being those change makers mm. um, for a more positive Pakistan. Sure. It's wonderful. Talking about that conference, viewers, uh, we'll, uh, we'll show you a little excerpt from uh, what we spoke to uh, Rabia on, in Oxford University this year in February from 3rd to 5th of uh, February, yes, in 2012. And let's see what Rabia said at that time. I think from this conference alone, I'm very optimistic about Pakistan's future. We have some incredibly bright, intelligent, successful, determined, ambitious young people which are here with us. Um, at Oxford and I believe they have an incredible passion for the country um, and they're willing to work towards uh, making it a better, more stable, economically uh, secure country for themselves, for their families and for future generations to come. You welcome us uh, in conversation with Rabia Bhatti, uh, the youngest councillor uh, of Buckinghamshire or youngest Muslim, female councillor uh, Britain ke andar. And and by being a Pakistani, uh, it's the third part you're seeing. Uh, Rabia, uh, aapne Pakistan ka visit kiya tha last time? In July last year. In July last year. Okay. Yes. Kaisa laga aapko Pakistan? Aur kya kiya aapne jaake? Bahut acha laga. It's always a pleasure to visit Pakistan. Where did you go? Uh, I stayed mainly in Islamabad. Unfortunately, Islamabad. I didn't travel out to Lahore or Karachi like I would have loved to have done so. Rubbing shoulders with all hot shots in Islamabad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I love Pakistan to bits. It's amazing to always go there. I really enjoy it. I love the culture. I love being back home. Um, and it was great. I had, a, I had a very, very good time. Did you go elsewhere outside Islamabad? Um, uh, I visited my native village from where my grandparents are from. Mm -hmm. Um, that was very good. In Islamabad, uh, I was fortunate enough to take a tour of the Senate and the National Assembly and so forth. So it was really good to sort of be inside those historic buildings. I that the summers Pakistan visit is ideal because coming from England, you have to experience the, the hot weather of Pakistan. Oh, absolutely. But absolutely. then with the, uh, these uh, the days, electricity situation, uh, it's slightly uh, hard. But uh, you you know, it must have been VIP and all AC cars and everything. <laughs> so how did you feel? You feel good coming absolutely. from Absolutely, yes, of course. I mean, it's, it's great always to be somewhere nice and warm, uh, especially when the British weather is so unpredictable. Um, but again, the heat is a part of what makes Pakistan, Pakistan. Yeah, you you didn't um, um, happen to go to Karachi or Lahore? Unfortunately, or no, I didn't have then enough you time. Seen Pakistan. But I've been, I've visited Karachi and Lahore uh, before on numerous occasions. Achha, numerous occasions, achha, I've achha. got achha. a lot of. Ab jati rehti Pakistan. Pe, Absolutely, um, any any moment that I get free time, I always want to plan okay. a trip to Pakistan. Right, right, and. Uh, uh, Rabia, how does it feel? Because now you've, you've mentioned to our viewers and, and to me as well that you've been to Pakistan uh, numerous times and, and your parents are from Pakistan as Indeed well. You're a Pakistani, British Pakistani. Uh, uh, how does it feel to be a Pakistani blood, Pakistani ID amalgamated with British? How does it feel to be a Pakistani? Very origin? proud. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm very proud yeah. to be a British Pakistani. I'm very proud of my origin, from where I come from. Um, from where my parents and their parents come from is indeed it's a part of my identity it's part of who I am um, I am British and therefore I am very proud of my British heritage um, also and where I am and, and it, it's just it's a part of me both cultures both heritages and traditions are a part of who I am and I think it's very important to always know where you've come from and to know what you believe in and to stay true to that um, whether it's the fish and chips from Britain or it's the yes. kebabs and the lissies from Pakistan. Yes. Um, I love them equally. Uh, viewers, uh, at this uh, point I'd love to mention that this year on Pakistan Day celebrations here in London, uh, Rabia Bhatti was awarded by Tamgai Pakistan, the Pakistan prestigious, pa prestigious Pakistan Award from the President of Pakistan uh, this year. And it's, it's, a, it's an honor for, for her as well as us, all of us, Pakistanis and British Pakistanis as well, honor achievements 
Erin Britton being a Pakistani. Today is a very special occasion, it's a very auspicious day, both for the British Pakistanis in this country and for the Pakistani people in the nation of Pakistan. I would like to wish everybody a very, very happy day. I would like to extend my warmest regards and best wishes to everybody. Um, I'm absolutely humbled and it's a great privilege to be here. Um, and I'd like to wish everybody a wonderful day. Rabia, congratulations again Thank on you. that. How does it feel and does it bring more responsibility with that as a package, <laughs> as a baggage? Uh, never as a baggage, never as a baggage, always as a pleasure. pleasure. Um, yeah. It was a wonderful feeling, absolutely, to, to be able to do uh, Pakistan Proud on an international and national level on that platform. Um, it's, it's an immense honour and I was extremely proud to have received that. Extremely humbled and privileged um, and very, very blessed. Um, I wasn't ever expecting it. At, at the age of 21, I don't think many people would. <laughs> um, but Alhamdulillah, it's, it's, it's definitely a blessing. Yeah, um, yeah. And as long as it goes out and inspires other people, um, I would consider it a job well done. Job well done. Did you thank the president and what way? <laughs> Did you send chocolates back home or something? Um, or something I unfortunately, else? no, I didn't send any chocolates. Um, I think if I got my hands on chocolates, I would have finished them myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's, it's, it's really wonderful. Um, I was very proud and I'm very happy that it's done. Uh, British Pakistan is proud in England and people of Pakistan in Pakistan proud. But uh, more importantly, my family. Sure. As sure. long as they're proud of me. Um, my country's proud of me, both countries. Sure. Um, I consider that I'm doing something right. Sure. Rabia, TV Apex is, 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 um, is f started on these, these notes, similar vision um, as, as, as is yours, uh, to, to bring about a change in society mm -hmm. and to, to make a mark for Pakistanis mm -hmm. and to connect Pakistanis from home and abroad. How do, you see, how do you see TV Apex performing and, do, and the start of it basically by being a web platform and, being, uh, and uh, being accessible from all across the world to see whatever's happening in, in Britain with regards to Pakistan and some of Pakistan as well. How do you see this effort being, being done? I think the word that you use accessible is actually really important. Being accessible first of all and being able to provide people with information um, to be able to share experiences from across the board. I think it's really important for a person's own development, uh, for them to learn and for them to grow and for them to experience things. Um, be able to provide that, I think it's, it's uh, a job well done. I think that it's extremely important. I wish TV Apex the best of luck with it because it's something that needs to be done, um, be that from the media or any other channel um, in regards to work, it's something that is very, very important. Yeah, at this absolutely. point I'd like to share with the audience of TV Apex that uh, we are privileged and honoured that it's Rabia's first proper interview with any channel or with the first Pakistani first channel? Pakistani first channel. First Pakistani channel. Uh, and and, and it's, it, will, it, will, it will be an honour for the, for the time to come that Rabia agreed to interview with us and TV Apex interviewing the first ever Pakistani young British Muslim counsellor uh, that Rabia Bhatti is. Rabia, what's, what's in future? The future will tell us, hopefully. I'm waiting for the same answer. <laughs> I'm waiting for the same Elaborate. answer. Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the moment, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. I'm, I'm juggling 13 different roles and my studies. Um, so that's keeping me extremely busy at the moment. Um, but I firmly believe in destiny and what is to come your way will come your way as long as you are determined to work for it. Um, opportunity sometimes comes in the form of overalls and hard work. It doesn't always come dressed up in any glitz or glamour and it's not always pretty. You have to work towards it, you have to be committed towards it and you have to believe in it. But to believe in something else you must believe in yourself. Yeah. Um, and whilst you do that I believe that you will get what you want the sky is not the limit. 
But one thing we're sure of that it'll have to involve something of a community bit that you are in and you're passionate about, isn't it? I mean, there would Absolutely. be something. Absolutely. You, you must find that one thing that you're extremely passionate about, that you really believe in, where you think you can make a difference, where you can share your vision, where you can be heard. Um, once you find that, that little place, and you'll find it inside yourself first. And then when you bring it out and you can share that with the rest of the world, you will have found your true calling, hopefully. Rabia, uh, we didn't talk much about your personal life as such. And, and we, we tried to sort of um, uh, squeeze uh, that in. Uh, but inshallah, maybe on another, another platform or in, a, in another interview, we'll, we'll try to uh, see a lighter side of Rabia as well, which, which you are, uh, mashallah, lighter in, in political <laughs> side as well. And, and uh, I hope and I pray that you stay like that. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming to TV Apex, Rabia Bhatti. And it was an immense pleasure. And we wish you all the best from TV Apex. And just go get it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Pleasure.